This virus has only kind of been known to scientists for a month. So, you know, there's a lot that we have to learn about this virus. It certainly seems to be spreading faster um, than we saw with SARS and with MERS. We aren't really clear about where this virus came from and we're not really clear about how it spread. I mean, as a scientist, that's probably the most concerning element about this current outbreak. So our technology, DNA medicine, does something differently. Instead of using a protein or the whole virus, we use just a small piece of the genetic sequence of the virus. We received the viral sequences um, from the Chinese government. We downloaded the sequences and within three hours we had a vaccine designed. And the genetic sequence of a virus basically is the blueprint of everything that makes up that virus. So we use a computer algorithm to scan that sequence to try and find tiny motifs in the DNA sequence and the genetic material of the virus that we think that the body would be able to mount a really strong immune response against. So we identify those motifs. We insert it into a, another piece of DNA called a plasmid, which is really just a carrier piece of DNA. We, we make lots and lots of copies of that DNA inside bacteria, which happen to be really excellent, tiny little factories for making DNA. Then we purify that DNA medicine, and then we add it to the human body, to completely healthy, normal cells. And, and that piece of DNA acts like a map or a picture for the human body to say, oh, I really need to recognize this part of the virus. And it's able to then go and find the virus, attack it, and hopefully kill it. So there's nothing on the market yet for DNA medicines, but we are the furthest along with this technology because our lead products in phase three testing. So that's the final stage before it goes to for full approval and marketing. And we're hoping to have it ready for clinical human clinical trials in early summer. What I've heard a lot of in the media is, oh, it's not as dangerous as flu. And I can really understand why people feel that way. But I would kind of preface that by saying, firstly, I think we should take all virus outbreaks really seriously um, and treat them all differently because they all are very distinct. And I would argue that flu is, of course, very serious and many people die of it every year. But we have a vaccine for flu and we have treatments for flu. And also our clinicians know what to do when somebody comes into a hospital or a doctor's office with flu. For the novel coronavirus, we have none of those things. And so I do think that um, it maybe minimizes the potential impact of the virus by comparing those two things.